It's your boy John Mike. What's up with you guys? You know who it is. It's your boy John Mike. And today we're here with the MIDI Plus AK490. Uh, so I've been talking about a few MIDI Plus things on the channel over the last few months because I think they're a really interesting company. They have a lot to offer and I think they're really underrated uh, in all of the products that they have. So I'm going to try to cover more of the stuff uh, that they have out there on the market. So this is a 49 key uh, MIDI controller. Actually runs on batteries. That's I think that's maybe a first a MIDI controller outside of like the Korg Nano Control uh, Studio that I know of that runs on batteries. Uh, so uh, class compliant, all that good stuff like that. Doesn't come with any software. Runs in the sixty-five to seventy dollar range. Uh, so it's definitely in the sub one hundred uh, price range in terms of MIDI controllers. So that's something to kind of look at and think about. Um, so we're going to look at, uh, what this, what this looks like and what this feels like. I have a, uh, a projection of what I think I'm going to think about it, but we're going to see if that holds true, uh, what I think it's going to feel like and what it's going to play like. So let's get it opened up and let's figure out what's going on with this thing. A few moments later. All right. Out of the box. Now, uh, looks really good. Actually basic, nice plastic feel, big octave buttons. These are probably the biggest octave buttons I think I've ever seen on a MIDI controller. Um, modulation wheel feels pretty good. Uh, pitch being now it's got this kind of odd kind of grooved kind of edge thing to it. I want, that's kind of interesting. USB cable, all of that stuff like that. On the back, surprisingly though, which is really, really dope, you actually have MIDI in and MIDI out ports. You have uh, a the sustain pedal that also, yeah, sustain pedal jack uh, and all that stuff like that. And then you have an on off switch and a battery. So the on off switch does power by USB, powered by DC, well, that's off. Then you can go DC battery. So that's pretty neat, actually. Pretty neat, pretty surprising. I never thought about that. So you got an off, you got power USB, then you got your DC power, which is your um, your battery, and then you actually have a compartment, hard to see, but it's a compartment right here for batteries. So go figure. Now keys, these are some interesting um, looking and feeling keys. They actually, it actually feels really, really good. It's not a bad feel. It's not clunky, it's not clacky. It feels really good. It's got some, some nice kind of uh, weight to it and girth to it. Uh, it's not weighted, but it's definitely semi-weighted, but it's a different semi-weighted. But what's different about this is that these the black keys and the white keys, they're actually thinner than average uh, keys. So this is really surprising to me. Very, very, very simple. It's uh, surprising to me. So we're going to see what this thing plays like. I'm going to get my MIDI, my Bluetooth MIDI dongle. I'll show it to you when I come back on the screen. Uh, and I'm going to plug that up and then I'm going to put a battery in it and we're going to see what a wireless setup looks like uh, with this keyboard. A few moments later. All right, so I actually did not have the right kind of batteries for this. It requires those big double D batteries, those big fat ones. Uh, and I just don't have time to go to this store right now. Maybe I'll do it in a follow-up video, but, the, but we're still going to plug it up and do it wireless and see how that works. Uh, I have the, uh, just a, you know, iPhone block and the USB cable, we're going to plug it up that way. Uh, so it's not plugged up to the computer. And then we're going to plug up these, uh, Van Gogh, um, Bluetooth, um, MIDI things. I'll leave a link to these, to those who are interested in these. This is wireless Bluetooth, uh, MIDI, uh, standard MIDI that plugs into the standard jack. So we're going to see what that works like. All right. So we've got it hooked up Bluetooth MIDI. Now. Here's where it starts to tell what's going on with it. The key bed action on it is, while it feels good while you're playing it without it, the velocity curve on it is not even.
So you can hear the, if you listen carefully, you can hear the difference in the dynamics in the, the, the chords that I'm playing in the notes. Some of them are playing real soft. Some of them are playing like real, like full velocity. See that? See how that, how do you hear that? That, that difference in that velocity curve across your notes that, that could be uh, detrimental in a production uh, environment, in a production situation, uh, or even in a live environment, you know, to have a note ring out at 127 when you really kind of played it at about half that velocity. So it's not really an even velocity on it in terms of the playing. Now, the keyboard feels decent. It's just not, it's just not giving me that that dynamic range that I look for in a keyboard. Now, granted, 60 bucks. It's not bad. It's growing on me. But it's just, yeah, just that, that subtle dynamic range that I'm lacking. Um, I, I don't feel like I can really finesse it. Yeah, I really can't finesse it like I want to. Now, the fact that it has uh, standard MIDI jacks on it is actually amazing for at this price range. You don't see many keyboards in this price range with standard MIDI jacks on it as well as USB. So that's a plus in the fact that you can, you can it's battery operated. So if I didn't, if I had the amount of batteries that I needed, cause it's like seven or eight of those D size batteries that you gotta put in here. So it's not like a small battery, like double A's or anything like that. It's like the big D size D batteries and you need about seven of them. So, um, but the fact that you can have a wireless, you can set this up as a wireless, that's actually a plus to me. I mean, I think that's really dope. I mean, I wouldn't use it for piano stuff, probably for playing like synth stuff because it's semi-weighted. If you got like a synth or a pad or a lead or using it to do auxiliary instruments, um, colors, some people call them, this board would probably work out really good and you could have it in your setup and actually have it and use it in a wireless way uh, that I think would be really, really dope. So um, that, that's it. You know, you, other than that, you don't really have much more to this keyboard than your big octave buttons that they have here. They didn't give you any kind of controls or knobs or faders volume, anything like that. So it's kind of lacking that you don't get any software for it. Uh, in my opinion, is it worth 65 bucks, 70 bucks? I wouldn't pay that for it, honestly. It's probably worth about half of that. If this was in the 35, 30, you know, 30 to, to 40 range, I would say that this was probably the bet one of the best keyboards you can buy for under 50 bucks, but that is not it's over 50 bucks, but it's it's yeah, outside of the standard MIDI jacks, if it didn't have that, this thing would be, you know, kind of crap to me because it doesn't add any any kind of controls. At least the the minimalistic controllers have the fader, have the one fader on it that you can use to control volume. Uh, this doesn't give you anything but just two big octave buttons. And I, maybe they was going for something minimalistic. I don't want to like, I, I hate to trash any company for their product, but this doesn't seem completely thought out. You know, I think if the key bed was better, um, I would give it a little bit better of a, a review. But uh, the key bed is not, not doing much for me in terms of the dynamic range for the price that they're offering. I know some keyboards and I've, I've reviewed some keyboards on here that are in that same price range, 60 to $70, 50 bucks, 49 bucks, uh, that play better than this, uh, that feel better than this when you're actually playing uh, and have more control for them. So I can't say that I can recommend this one to you totally, but if you want to give it a go for yourself, if you, you again, auxiliary instruments and you don't need volume control, this could probably be a pretty decent board. I would, if if I if I was gonna put put it in any kind of application, I would take this keyboard. I would put it on my, you know, second tier stand in a live environment. I would plug my, uh, I would put D batteries in it and fill it up, and I plug my um, my you know blue Bluetooth MIDI things here and just have it completely wireless. You know what I mean? To where I can play and if I needed like some strings 
or a pad. I could just reach up and just play it on there or do a lead and it's connected to my computer wirelessly. That's what I would use it for. If you got that kind of thing in mind, this may work for you. Uh, but if you're trying to really get this as a main production board or something to learn how to play piano on, or you just want a nice little cheap MIDI controller, there are better options uh, than this. So appreciate you guys hanging out, try to give you something honest that you can you can walk by and live by on this board. Uh, the, if you wanna get it, there's an affiliate link below that you can check out. It helps the channel when you uh, purchase using the affiliate link. Uh, if uh, not, if you don't want to buy anything, you don't have to. You can just hit the subscribe button. You can like this video. You can turn on notifications. You can share it, drop a comment. That doesn't cost you anything but a few seconds of your time. But I'll take, talk to you guys on the next video. Uh, I'm out. Holla at your boy.